Well, good morning, everyone. You are most welcome. It is uh, Thursday, the 5th of March. Now, this video is about a, a mutation that seems to have occurred in the COVID-19 causing virus, worked out by studies in, in China. Now, this mutation seems to mean that we now have two forms of the COVID-19 virus, two forms. And we'll look at these in a minute. They're called the L and the S form of the virus. Now, this has some implications that are concerning, but it has some implications that are less concerning. And that's what this, this video uh, is about. So if you want to skip this, if you're looking for news, then this is not so much about that. This is about the, the science and the implications of this new mutation, this evolution of the virus from one form into another, giving us now two forms of the virus. Now, the implications of this are that one form of the virus might make more severe disease. It might be more virulent and it might be more transmissible. So, so that is basically what we're concerned about and what we're going to be looking at in, in, this, in this, which is a bit scientific in places, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Now, I'm going to put this link in. This is where it came from, from um, academic researchers. Now, what happens in evolution is that there are mutations in the genome that the genome is the genetic code so i have a genome that, to make me a virus has a, a genetic code a genome to make it a dog has a, a genome to make a dog everyone's got their own genome and these scientists in a in a peking's university school and the, the institute for pasteur in shanghai so two, two prestigious uh, microbiological departments in china have, have done this um, now Late December 2019, as we know, there was a zoonotic spread. Now, what happens is this COVID-19 virus spread from an animal, probably, probably from bats to an animal to humans. It's still not clear yet. There was this zoonotic spread. So the virus got into humans. Now, this is not uncommon. This happens with the MERS virus, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus, for example, where the virus can go over to camels to humans, but then it's not very transmissible between humans. But it looks like there was another mutation in this COVID-19 virus, which meant it could be uh, transmitted between humans. So that, that's what happened first. Now, <clears throat> the, 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 these scientists in, in China, they took 103 copies of the... Uh, sars cov 2 Now, th this is the name of the virus that causes the, uh, the COVID-19. So, severe acute respiratory syndrome hyphen coronavirus 2. Now, the SARS-1 coronavirus was the one that caused the outbreak in 2002-2003. So, this is the name of the virus, and the virus causes C-O-V-I-D, uh, C O V. 19 that's the name of, of the disease so COVID-19 um, CO coronavirus disease caused by the coronavirus first discovered in uh, 2019 so that's what they were stu studying so what they looked at was phylogenetic relationships now this means the the evolutionary relationships so viruses evolve they, they can change they can mutate and evolve. So it's looking at the relationships between the viruses and they're actually looking at the genome of the viruses right down at the level of the genetic code. Now, there were two, <clears throat> two, um, two changes. Uh, so some studies have shown three, but this one showed uh, two changes. And these are called single nucleotide polymorphisms, which is a bit of a mouthful, but poly means many. Uh, shape, morph, morph means shape. So what you get in in RNA, because this, because this, of course, the, the, the uh, coronavirus is an RNA virus. It's RNA virus, ribonucleic acid virus. Now what you get is these are the bases: adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. A G C U. So the virus of the COVID nineteen infection is one long strand of this RNA. And this strand is made up of sequences of these bases or these letters. So they might be an A, C, G, U, U, G, A, C. Long sequences of these letters. 
about 26 to 32,000 of these letters. Now, if we compare this to your genome, you've got about 3.1 billion of these letters. This virus has got 26 to, to 32,000 of these bases. And what happens is that any th th three of these, th three of these code for one amino acid. It's, it's what geneticists call the triplet code. So uh, that, that, that'll, that'll code for, for one amino acid. That'll code for another amino acid. That'll be for another amino acid. And the strings of amino acids go together to make the proteins, which make the virus. So there was just two changes out of these 30,000 or so um, bases that, 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 that happened in this mutation. But what that meant was <clears throat> that there's now two main lineages of the virus called the L strain and the S strain types. So this ancestral virus has like split off. So what the geneticists think is they think there was an ancestral form called the S form of the virus. That was the first form. And this form has carried on reproducing. And so we've got lots of S forms now probably all over the world. But at the same time, there was a genetic mutation at this point here in one of the S form viruses. So one of the S form viruses here mutated into another type of virus, which is now called the L form. So we now have these two forms. So the single, single ancestral S form has now carried on as the S form, but there's this branch off, this mutation called the L form. So we now have these two. And the L form is considered to be more infectious and more virulent. It can transmit more easily from person to person and it can cause more severe disease. So we still have, so now we have two forms, two main forms, two main strains in the world. <clears throat> now the, the mutated later L type spreads more quickly. Now, originally, when these Chinese scientists were looking at it, 70% of the uh, viruses they looked at had the L form genome, the L form. So um, when they looked at it, most cases were the L form. They found about, was it 75, 70 percent of these were L form in, in their initial study. But of course, this was inside China. This was inside China. Now, it may well be that the form of the virus that's causing the pandemic, and uh, we hope this is the case, is the S form because the S form appears to be less transmissible and less virulent, causing less severe disease. So let's see what seems to have happened here. So they think, the Chinese scientists think they picked up more of the L type because the L type was more prevalent in the early stages of the outbreak. So prevalent means the number that are present at any one time. So they think the L type was more prevalent in the early stages of the outbreak. So in the early stages of the outbreak, a lot of the cases that we're seeing in Wuhan were caused by this L-type, presumably during this kind of period of time here, caused by the L-type, causing very transmissible disease and quite severe disease as well, or more severe disease than the S-type. But I've just said we think it's the S-type that's probably causing the pandemic, or mostly causing the pandemic. We're, we're, there's qualifications to that. So how come the S-type now seems to be more prevalent than the L-type when initially the L-type was more prevalent than the S-type? Well, that's probably because of the lockdown control in China. The Chinese closed down cities, they closed down the spread, they isolated people, and that seems to have reduced the multiplication of the L-type. So it looks like the Chinese have done us all quite a big favour here by um, severely restricting the spread of the more virulent, more transmissible L-type with very good quality shut down social isolation procedures. So we think the frequency of the L-type decreased after early January, probably due to these interventions closing off opportunities for the L-type to spread. So the Chinese lockdown may have halted the L-type, so the pandemic may be of the S-type. And remember, the S-type is less transmissible and less virulent, these scientists believe. Now, <clears throat> two of the changes between the S and the L lineages were in the spike receptor binding domain. Now, this is very scientific, but what this means is um, we have this um, coronavirus like this. And we know it's got these protein spikes sticking off it like this. So it's got these, it looks spiky on the electron micrograph. So these protein spikes here, 
all around about the virus. Now these protein spikes are important because it's these protein spikes that make the virus transmissible. So for the virus to get into your cell, imagine this is the surface of one of your um, respiratory epithelial cells that we looked at before on, on great magnification. Now on the surface of these respiratory epithelial cells, there are these protein receptors called the ACE2. angiotensin converting enzyme receptors. Now what happens is these protein spikes fit into so that this virus moves and the protein spikes fit into this receptor like this. Still attached to the virus of course like that. So it's these protein spikes that fit in. So these protein spikes are what makes the virus infectious because the virus the protein spikes have to fit onto this ACE2 receptor site. This process is called adsorption and only then can the virus get into the cell. And we rem remembered yesterday that the virus can only reproduce inside the cell because they're actually pretty useless things. They can only reproduce inside human cells. Then the virus will reproduce inside the human cells and give out lots more copies of the, the tiny virus. So it needs this to get in. So it's reasonable that to infer that if there's a change in the molecular conformation of this, so the genetics, these base pairs that control the shape of this viral spike, if they change, that can mean that the viral spike is able to fit into the receptor site more efficiently. It can increase binding and that will make the virus more transmissible. And more viruses are going to bind, so more, virus, more viruses can get in and the disease process can happen all the quicker. So that's what seems to be happening here. And then, of course, this cell is in the respiratory epithelium. So this cell on, on a smaller scale would look like this. These are the cells that line the small airways. So the virus gets in, reproduces inside the cell, then the cell gives out many, many thousands of copies of the virus that can then be coughed out to spread to uh, other people. So that look like, looks like what's happening. So it looks like the S form has got a protein spike which is less able to adsorb onto the ACE2 receptor. Therefore, the disease process is slower. Where, whereas the L form, this later mutated, more virulent F, L form, can fit into that more efficiently. So that seems to be what is, is happening. So the Chinese lockdown may have halted the L-type. Two of the changes between the S and the L-type related to this spike receptor binding domain. So that's just scientific language for saying this bit, this bit that fits into your ACE2 receptor to get into the virus. Without that, the virus can't get into you. It can't cause infection. So that looks like that's what's happened. Now, Implications of this, practical implications of this. Well, one thing is it's possible to be infected with both the S and the L type. So it looks like to some degree um, the S and the L type are circulating. Now, I know this doesn't quite add up because we've said that it looks like it might be the S type that's causing the pandemic and the L type is more transmissible. But it looks like there might be more S types than L types, although this all needs to be clarified. We're not sure about this at the moment. But this seems to be what's happening. But in an individual in the US tested positive for both strains, the S and the L. So it looks like both strains might be around. And the problem is if we don't lock down properly like the Chinese did, then this L form, the more transmissible, more infectious form, might become more prevalent making the epidemic or the pandemic more serious. That is the concern. Now, some people have said that um, the vaccine may not work on mutated strains and possible vaccine would need two vaccines instead of one vaccine. Now, the people that are designing the vaccines in 35 laboratories and institutions all around the world are very clever scientists and they know this. So, so what they do is they make a vaccine that works on a very highly conserved part of the genome a part that's not changing very all the time. So it's still likely, and this is very reassuring, that one vaccine will work for both strains. So when we get the vaccine in 2021, 
we should be able to immunise people and we're hopeful that they're going to be immunised against the S and the L strains, which would just be simply wonderful. But what it means in the meantime is that the antibody response generated in your body to the S and the L type may be slightly different. So, for example, if someone was infected with the, the S, they'll make antibodies to the S type. Which will make them immune to the S type. The S type antigen, the S type virus. But then the L type might have slightly different antibodies. Which will make you immune to the L type. But what is less clear at the moment is if these antibodies will give you cross immunity. If the antibodies to the S type will give you L type immunity or if the antibodies to the L type will give you S type immunity. That's currently uh, unclear. So there have been a few cases reported of reinfection. I haven't got a scientific paper on that, but there have been a few cases reported of reinfection. So this could be a possible mechanism of that, although it doesn't seem to be widespread, which is reassuring. But it also means that there could be waves of the infection. So there could be a, a peak of infections in, in a country that then die down. And then there could be another wave at another time because of these two different forms. But the good news is here, we're really hoping that one vaccine will work for both. Now, the other thing that we don't know that's unclear at the moment is if being infected with two types gives you a more virulent disease. So if you get the S and the L infection at the same time, do, does that make you sicker? That is unclear at the moment, quite is what, what, quite what the implications for that are. We simply don't, I simply don't know the answer to that question. People are working on it. Um, so that is where we're at. So now to summarise, I know that was a bit scientific. So you, if, you're, if you're really interested, you might have to watch that again or, or read some other scientific information on it. But basically what we're saying is that generally speaking, the COVID-19 um, RNA virus is, is generally described as being relatively stable. But there have been a couple of changes in two of the 30 odd thousand bases that make up the genome of this virus. And it looks like we've just been unlucky in that those two parts of the genome, those codons, those genetic codes in the genome, just happen to code for the very important protein that makes it transmissible into your ACE2 receptor. So, so it seems it, 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 it's made that a more precise fit. It's just really, really unfortunate. So that may be what has happened, but we still think that the vaccine will, will, will work for both. So what we need to do is more genomic studies and work out now, or clever scientists need to work this out, how different the different strains of the virus can cause different presentations of disease and if infection with both strains of the virus at the same time will cause more severe disease. Oh. Whenever you think your hands are contaminated, do give them a wash. Don't lose the simple things in the, uh, in the midst of the science.